Hey guys, this is Malinki. Welcome back to my channel, Voice of Malinki. Today we will talk about homeotic genes in human. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you like my video, please do like, comment and share my video. So in our previous lecture, I have also talked about homeotic genes. What is homeotic gene? Uh, if you want to watch that lecture, you can do. Link is in the description box. Let's talk about homeotic genes in human. So in vertebrates, homeotic genes are divided into two categories. First one is the Hox genes. These genes are clustered in genome. And second one is other homeotic genes. Other homeotic genes are scattered across the genome. So humans have 39 homeotic genes or Hox genes. Better to say Hox genes. These 39 Hox genes are grouped into four clusters. Hox A genes are placed on chromosome number 7. Hox B genes are placed on chromosome number 17. Hox C genes are placed on chromosome number 12. And Hox T genes are placed on chromosome number 2. So here is the chart. These are different Hox A genes. These are different Hox B genes. These are different Hox C genes. And these are different Hox D genes. Based on this chart, I have made these. Okay. So, the ancestors of vertebrates had a single Hox gene cluster, which was duplicated twice early in vertebrate evolution by whole genome duplications to give four Hox gene clusters, Hox A, Hox B, Hox C and Hox D. Hox genes control the development of many structures in the body such as somites which form the vertebrae and limbs, dermis of the skin, skeletal muscles of back, body wall and limbs. The genes of the different clusters work together to establish the identity of the body segments along the head tail axis. The genes toward the beginning of the cluster that is closer to one. So we can say these genes which are closer to one. They specify structures at the head end of the organism. The genes toward the end of the cluster closer to 13. Uh, so we can say these genes which are closer to 13. They specify structures near the tail end of the organism. Many Hox genes toward the end of the cluster develop vertebrate limbs like arms and legs. So these are genes closer to 13. They specify arms and legs. Mutations in Hox genes can lead to defects in the morphologies of an organism. For example, mutations in Hox D3 in humans can cause a genetic condition called synpolydactyly in which people are born with extra fingers or toes. Hox genes mutations play a role in evolution as they lead to morphological differences which in turn lead to bigger changes in the body of these organisms. So this is all about today's lecture. I hope you liked the lecture. Thank you for watching my video.